All right, I'm gonna take a few minutes to go over lesson three. And if you have any additional questions, we will be going over these same slides in chat. I will be happy to answer any questions that you have, but I'm just gonna go through and give you some explanations for lines in a coordinate plane. Um, hopefully this is a review of some of your algebra work. And um, like I said, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have in chat. All right, so let's take a look at this first question. The first question says points three comma 11 and seven comma X are on a line with a slope of three, find X. All right, so let's just first highlight a couple of things. Um, number one, let's highlight the fact that we have a point three comma 11 and seven comma X and we have a slope of three. So right away that's going to tell us that we are going to use our slope formula. So just as a reminder, your slope formula is Y2 minus Y1 subtract Y's on top over X2 minus X1 subtracting your X's on the bottom. And let's just take a minute and label what we have at the top. So we have X1, Y1 and then we have X2, y2 and their slope is going to be your m value of three so your slope formula you can say that this is equal to m all right so let's just go ahead and plug in our information in so we have y2 minus y1 so we can subtract our y's on the top subtract our x's on the bottom x2 minus x1 and fill in our slope of three okay so that looks like x minus 11 which here, x minus 11, seven minus three is equal to three. So now we're just gonna go ahead and simplify and solve. All right, so number one, we can simplify in the denominator. Okay, that gives us four. X minus 11 is still left on the top. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna get rid of that four in the denominator. So to do that, you are actually going to multiply both sides by four. Okay, and remember when you multiply, those cancel each other out and you're just left with this X minus 11 equals three times four or 12. Okay, so then we can just go ahead and add 11 to both sides and we get X is equal to 23. All right, so let's take a look at this next question. So we wanna know, do the slopes of the lines make the lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So let's just get a refresher of what parallel lines mean. Remember, if you have a parallel line, they have exactly the same slope, okay? A perpendicular line has what's called the opposite or negative reciprocal. Now, all that means is you are going to take the sign that is the of, of your original slope, make it the opposite, and reciprocal is flip the fraction. So let's just take a look at an example of a perpendicular line. So let's say we had a slope is equal to two, negative, or I also think of opposite reciprocal. So the opposite of a positive two is going to be a negative, now, reciprocal means flip the fraction. Now here, we don't have a fraction, but anytime you don't have a fraction, you, remember you can always just put a one under it. So flip two over one becomes negative one over two. And this upside down T, that is going to mean perpendicular. All right, so let's just say our slope was three fourths. Okay, let's say it's negative three fourths. The negative or opposite reciprocal, the negative the becomes the opposite, that makes that positive flip your fraction is four over three. So that would be your perpendicular slope. So let's take a minute. I just want you to take a minute and look at these slopes here. Uh, go ahead and pause the recording and determine which one are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And then you are hit play, and I want you to see if you got the answers correct. So you're gonna take the pair, for example, of one and negative one and decide is that parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And neither would mean they're not the same slope, and um, they're not negative reciprocals. And remember with perpendicular, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, fractions flip. So neither means it doesn't satisfy either of those two categories. Okay, so let's just take a look and see what we have here. All right, so first of all, parallel is three comma three because it's exactly the same, okay? Um, our other parallel slope was negative four fifths and negative four fifths, exactly the same. 
are perpendicular one and negative one. I know that's a little bit tricky, but think about this. If we have a slope of one, perpendicular means if it was positive, we make it negative. And this fraction is like one over one, flipping the fraction just makes that one over one. So I know that that's like a little bit tricky to see. Okay, the next perpendicular one was two fifths and negative five halves. So this was positive, this was negative two fifths, five halves, flip your fraction. Okay, the next one is zero and undefined. Well, that's a little bit crazy. So a slope of zero, remember, looks like this. It's a horizontal line. And an undefined slope is a vertical line. Okay, so they actually meet at a 90 degree angle, which would mean that they are also perpendicular. All right, and then the last one that we have is gonna be negative one half. Opposite, the negative becomes positive flip the fraction. You could like technically write this as two over one, but we don't need that to be two over one. All right, and let's see which two were neither. So one fourth and negative one fourth, those are neither because they're not parallel because they're not exactly the same and they're not perpendicular. The perpendicular, you'd have to flip this one to make it four over one. And we didn't do that here. We just made it negative. Okay. All right. And then your final one was two thirds and three halves. So this one, they flipped the fraction two thirds became three halves, but this one's positive and this one would have to be negative. All right, now what I would like you to do is take a minute and you're gonna look at the equations that you have here and you want to determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither by comparing the slope. So go ahead, take a minute and try these. And then um, after you try them, I will go over the answers and go ahead and check to see how you did. All right, so with this first one, we are actually given ordered pairs. Since we're given ordered pairs, we're going to use our slope formula, which remember is subtracting your y's over subtracting your x's. And when you're subtracting um, your y's over your x's, it doesn't matter if you do y2 minus y1 or y1 minus y2. Just make sure on the bottom, if you started with y2, you start with x2. If you start with y1, then you need to start with x1 on the bottom. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find the slope of these ordered pairs. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're using our slope formula, okay? And you should have found that they are going to actually be parallel, all right? And then, um, so what your slope would actually look like here is you're gonna do, I actually do usually, um, it doesn't matter. So let's do negative four minus negative six for that first one, okay? Negative four minus a negative six, all over four minus zero, which becomes a positive, or sorry, yep, a positive two over four, which make sure you simplify it if you can, is one half. Then let's use the second one right here. Um, three minus two, okay, all over two minus zero. So that is gonna give us also one half, they're exactly the same. All right, now this is a line formed by the equation y equals two thirds x minus five and a line formed by y equals negative three halves x plus four. All right, so for this one, this is in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. The only time you can get the slope from an equation is when it is solved for y or when y is all by itself, okay? When y is all by itself, there's nothing in front of it, your slope is always your number in front of x. So let's take a look and see what our numbers in front of x's are. So the number in front of x here is 2 thirds, the number in front of x here is negative 3 halves, and they are opposite reciprocals, positive, negative, flip my fraction, 2 thirds, 3 halves, therefore they're perpendicular. Okay, now take a look at this one. This one is in standard form. So standard form means X and Y is on the same side and we have um, our X value is always positive and I have no fractions and I have no decimals, okay? All right, so we need to find the slope. So to find the slope, we actually have to solve each of these for Y. You cannot, um, you cannot find the slope unless they're solved for y. So, and you don't have to do anything like too fancy here. So you should have just subtracted 2x, subtracted 2x, and you would end up with y, 3y equals 9 minus 2x. Okay, divide every single solitary piece by 3, and you're going to get y equals 
3 minus 2 thirds x. And you could rewrite that so it says y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 3. Totally the same. Your slope here is going to be negative 2 thirds. Y is solved. It's the piece in front of x. All right. Now we want to do the same thing for this second one. So let's subtract 2x, subtract 2x. Okay, so we're left with negative 3y equals, we can write that it says negative 2x plus 12 or 12 minus 2x. I'm just going to write this as negative 2x plus 12. Okay, divide by negative 3, every single solitary piece. Negative 2 thirds and the negative and negative uh, make that a positive. This cancels out. So you have y equals positive 2 thirds x. Positive 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. We don't really care about that. And this is a positive 2 thirds. So if you take a look, negative 2 thirds and positive 2 thirds, um, this is positive, this is negative, but the fraction did not flip. Okay, so in this case, it is going to be um, neither. All right. Okay, so uh, your next video will be your next couple of questions.